Hello, I am Panos Kodzathanasis, and uh, this is uh, ASEAN Movie Pulse interviews. Today I'm here with Anna Isabel Matutina. How are you, Anna? I'm fine. <laughs> Very nice to have you here. So, Thank you for inviting me. Okay, great, great. Uh, so to begin with, uh, can you tell me the inspiration behind the movie, 12 Weeks? What gave you the idea for the movie? Um, when I started writing 12 Weeks, it was back in 2017. I was turning 40 already by that time. And I felt that um, becoming a mom was like becoming un un very unlikely. Um, I was married at that time. I wanted to have children, but I had problems with um, reproducing. And then during that time as well, I had a friend who was in her 40s already who became unexpectedly pregnant. And I was trying to come to terms with the fact of never becoming a mom. And she was going through through another, you know, another crisis because she never wanted to be a mom. So um, I kind of started with that. And then I realized I was like the journey of writing uh, the film was basically me trying to discover if, if ever I get pregnant at the very late this age at maybe at 40, if I get pregnant at 40, would I really want to keep it? So that was really the, the push that I needed. And then it just led me to, to 12 weeks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But do you have an answer now to this question? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. Um, definitely, I wouldn't want to be a mother now. <laughs> so, um, and especially during that time, that was 2017, that was also the peak of the Me Too movement. And that was also the second year of the under the Duterte administration, which was really quite, there was very blatant misogyny everywhere. Um, and it was a very um, tumultuous time in the Philippines with the Marawi siege and and the attacks on women on on a lot of our rights during that time. So all of these came into play when I was writing the film. It was very it was scary to be a Filipino during that time, and it was scarier to be a woman during that time. And I think until now, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you, would, would you say that uh, Filipino society is still patriarchal, let's say, and conservative? Yes, it's, um, I mean, just having a reproductive health law, it took around, I think, 14 years to get, to get passed. Um, and until now, we are the only um, of two states that still does not have a divorce. You know, divorce is still illegal, along with the Vatican. Oh, <laughs> you really? know, it's Philippines. Yeah, we don't have divorce in the Philippines. Abortion is illegal. Um, and there are so many anti-women laws still in place. Like, if a woman commits adultery, the husband can, can sue her and she can go to prison. But for a man, if a man commits adultery, you know, it has to be concubinage. Um, the man has to like house the woman before it becomes um, illegal. You know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so okay. it's very lopsided the way um, laws apply to women as opposed to men. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't see any of that improving in the future? Um, well, not yet, mm -hmm. because we are we are working towards that. But with how things are going right now, um, things are becoming more authoritarian. Things are becoming worse in the Philippines. Um, we saw that under when when we had President Duterte, and now we have another Marcos. Um, so I don't see things improving. We have the vice president now who is also who is the daughter of former president Duterte and she wants to bring back ROTC which is the military school for for university students like the required military school 
And under this, under our OTC, a lot of abuses take place, you know. It's very toxic, the toxic masculinity, a lot of hazing. People actually die from it because of all the physical abuse. So yeah, and, and we are still 80% Catholic, mm-hmm. although most of us are really not non-practicing. Um, but it is, I mean, the church really has a huge influence on the government, despite the separation of church and state. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So is this why these people get voted into government? Is the effect of the Catholic church, you say? you think not really the the because our electoral process is also very skewed towards those who are already on top um they control the local government they control the election they there's so much corruption so much cheating i mean if if majority of the filipinos are really dirt poor they would sell their votes Mm-hmm. If this if this candidate if this politician can promise you um 2000 pesos just vote for me because you know a lot of really poor Filipinos are already disillusioned because it's been happening year after year after year so um and their lives are not changing our lives are not changing people are just getting poorer and poorer so yeah i mean all the candidates are the same anyway So I'll just vote for the guy who can pay a much higher rate for my vote. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. All right. And um, okay, to, to get back into the movie a bit, can you, yeah. how would you describe uh, Alice to someone else, let's say? Well, Alice is, um, the way I pictured her, she's a very, she's quite a control freak. Um, she likes being in control. Um, because she basically took care of herself while growing up. She grew up with our mother. She was passed around. I mean, this is the backstory I had in my head when I was writing it. She was passed around from relative to relative, but she kind of succeeded. She succeeded and she, um, because she struggled, she worked hard. And these are the things that she can control. You know, she likes being in control. But, and the, the film begins where, She's trying to take control of her personal life and she wants to break up with a very toxic, from a very toxic relationship. She wants to do away with it. But there's, but she couldn't control her body. So, so there are attempts to, you know, she, she wants to be, to, to be able to control, um, what happens to her. She, she got pregnant and in a way she wants to, to be able to get rid of it. So she takes control of that. But it's not as simple as, you know, taking control of that because there are a lot of things that come into play in women's decisions because of who she is and her history. There's a lot of trauma involved um, in decision-making, a lot of stigma, a lot of cultural bias as well. So all of these things come into play. Mm-hmm. But do you like her? Would you go out for a drink with her, let's say? Well, I wouldn't... All, I love all my characters. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like the, the number one thing you need to do when you're writing. You should, you're supposed to love all your characters. And I love her the most because I do relate with her. Um, I'm kind of... Yeah, I find my... I, I kind of fashioned her in a sense, in my image, mm-hmm. where you want to be in control of things, you, you're very sure of, she's very sure of herself. She, she thinks she can do a lot of things, but, but, and then when things don't go her way, like her world crumbles, and mm-hmm. it's really hard to get back up. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, why I, like, I relate with a lot of her um, anxiety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but uh, why doesn't she make her boyfriend leave the apartment? She's like sort of back and forth in the breakup. She did. She did. Um, um, this is, it's actually, it's hard to, to explain it in black and white terms. But this is how toxic relationships work. 
um, it's so easy to say that, that you can leave, that this person can leave. But it's always the hardest thing is the, the cutting the pie takes years. Mm -hmm. That's why there are a lot of abused women who stay in relationships. And the, the only way I can explain that is to show it in film. Mm -hmm. I don't, um, as a woman who have been in very toxic relationships, it's really like that. Um, because there's, there's the shame also connected to it. There's the guilt. And then, um, there are needs. There are, um, habits that are hard to break. And there's a lot of gaslighting involved as well. A lot of threat. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's very, how did I say? It's, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. And I tried to show that in a, in a way in the film. I wanted to show how, while, while in the same way she tries to act like she's in control, she's actually not in control of the situation in a, like, suddenly he's back in her life again. And she doesn't, she just couldn't figure out how to get rid of this person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And uh, what about her relationship with her mother? That seems also complicated. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, that's the film, you know, trying to show very complicated relationships. With the mother, it's, she's very much like her mother, but her mother lived in a different time. Um, and the thing is, her mother was never there while she was growing up. So there, there is that resentment. She does not hate her mother. She does. It's just that she doesn't feel connected to her mother. I mean, she's old enough to not. She feels like she's old enough not to need a mother. Why is she suddenly entering my life now that I'm in? You know, I'm old enough. I don't. You were not here when I needed you, and now you're trying to insert yourself in my life, which is more or less really annoying. And um, and but the, but the thing is. Um, there's also that fear in her that she doesn't want to end up like her mom. Her mm -hmm. mom was a single mom. And of course, she resents the fact that her mother always reminds her that she actually wanted to abort her. You know? Um, that's, that's, and I'm sure, and the mother doesn't do it to be cruel. She does it to explain she wanted to explain the situation but you know you never get to hear the end of her story in the film it's because i think with most mothers who do not really have a choice you know she doesn't she did not have the kind of freedom that alice now ha now has um it was a different time it was martial law it was in Mindanao where a lot of clashes were happening Mm -hmm. And her only choice was to escape mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that she could give her daughter a better life. And of course, th these are traumas that are passed on to, to your daughters, you know. And mm -hmm. that was my point in the film, like all these, all these traumas that we pass on from generation to generation, it just keeps on continuing because we can't, we don't, we want to find that freedom, that right, that where we can actually have a very healthy relationship with our parents or to be able to, to give birth in a very peaceful situation, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, yeah, you basically, it's basically the passing on of trauma. That's why the, my last frame was very important. And, and, I, I connect it directly with, with how the Philippines is politically. I mean, um, the repetition of the cycle of the violence, like until now, we're still, we're, we, we're going through the same things all over again. The conflicts in Mindanao, having a, a, a dictator or having a very fascistic government, it's, it's happening all over again. It's, it's, we, we never came to terms with what, what the problem was from the very beginning. 
And there's a lot of unpacking that needs to be done before we actually, you know, find that space where we can un, um, learn from our past. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do, do you think it's inevitable that we end up being like our parents? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know, because I mean, I've always, I kind of, you know, growing up, I mean, at least for daughters, from from what I've read and what I always hear from my friends, like I I actually look like my mom and I talk like her, and and I'm I feel like I am turning into her even no matter how much I try <laughs> not to, mm -hmm. and that's like that's why we're always clashing, like on the smallest, the pettiest things. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that I don't love her. It's just I can't stand being with her. <laughs> I okay, I, I understand the feeling. Yes, I know what you mean. Okay. And uh, what about the relationship with her friend, who is also her colleague? She's kind of supportive, but also a bit judgmental. I was not sure what to make yeah. of her. Yeah. Well, yeah, I kind of fashioned that with how my relationships are with my friends, with, you know, um it's there's a lot of passive aggressive um remarks um i realize the reason why we do that is because we're projecting we're projecting ourselves when we're angry when we're um in the film actually it is lorna her best friend who was undergoing a real crisis because her husband is dying and she couldn't the only way she could voice out um, her her anger, her you know, her anxiety was was being you know like kind of being brutally brutal to to Alice. Um, those are that was how she manifested her problems. So it was very different. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of put their relationship in a in very rocky terms, but. Eventually, they kind of, you know, figured it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And how was your cooperation with uh, Max Eigenman? How was the what? Uh, your collaboration with uh, Max Eigenman. Am I pronouncing oh, yeah. it no, Okay. It was great because um, I knew it was going to be, I knew it was going to be an actor's film. I, it was very important for me to find really good actors. My problem was I didn't I didn't really know how Max worked. Like I haven't seen a lot of her films. Um, I know I knew that she won for Best Actress for the film Verdict, but it never really got shown here in the Philippines. So I still had no idea. Mm -hmm. Um, but she was came highly recommended by by my script consultant. And when I met her, when I met her over Zoom. I think the energy she brought to that meeting was what convinced me to take her. And the fact that she was so, so excited over the material. I mean, my, the material itself is not easy. A lot of the things were happening internally. And that's not an easy thing for any actor to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I told her, a lot of these things are internal. I have to see all these things in your face. Sometimes you're feeling angry and sad and anxious all at the same time, you know? And so, and the thing is, despite her young age, she's not actually 40. Um, she, she, she's quite mature for her age. She went through a lot of things at a very young age. So I knew that she had a deep well of emotion she could just, you know, dig into if she needed it. And it, it was so easy with her. Um, she, a lot of times during her scenes, because the, the, the film is like really 100% her. She's in every scene. So a lot of the times we would talk in between scenes and I would just tell her something and then she would add to it. You know, she, that's how we did it. I, I told her I'm not, um, 100%. I don't need it to be 100% loyal to the script. This is just a guide. Mm -hmm. 
I just I want you to bring yourself into this film because I think that will make the film better than what it is on paper. Mm-hmm. So and it was so easy with her. Um, my only my only problem with her was she easily cries. <laughs> so it was so easy for her to cry. Like in every scene, she always felt like crying, and I'm like. Okay, your character, you're not supposed to cry. <laughs> you only get to cry in the last scene. So I want you to look like you're about to cry, but you're not going to cry. Because, you know, this is how women, or in a, pat- in a patriarchal society, that's how strength is viewed, how, being able to control your emotions. But I still, I, w- I want you to control your emotions, but I need to see it in your face, in mm-hmm. a sense. Like something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And uh, what about Big Bing Pimentel? Is her actual mother, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> that was what was great about this. Um, I really planned on getting a real life because we have a lot of that in the Philippines, a real life mother daughter, um, hmm. actors. So, so um, I felt that this would give like more depth and create the tension that is needed because if you don't if you're not mother and daughter i i don't think i'm not sure it would have the same energy um because um ding and max as mother and daughter in real life they already have their past they don't need to cre- recreate it they don't have to get to that space so it makes my job easier as a director they already know you know these conflicts between mother and daughter these tensions this an- annoying the annoying things about how annoyed you are with each other and you know even off cam they still sound like alice and grace um mm-hmm. so that, that really helped a lot and i think also because max knew she was act- acting with her mother it put her under more pressure like And you could see it in her face. And that was what I wanted, you know. When you're with your mother, you feel the pressure, like literally, you feel it. And yeah, I needed to have that in a scene. So even though when they have no lines and they're just quiet, I want to feel that. And I think those were like the strongest moments when they're not talking. Mm But uh, how how was their co- collaboration? Did they fight or anything or everything okay in the set? I mean, no. <laughs> no, they no, they were actually they were actually very supportive of each other. Um, yeah, um, I think Max felt the pressure more, mm-hmm. and Bing was her typical motherly self. Like she would criticize <laughs> Max on set. Like she would, okay, something showing. Like you should dress like this. You should, you know. It's like, you know, she's still in her role. It's like she never broke character from her character. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, they were they weren't hard to work with at all. I think they appreciated the fact that they got to work together here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And can you tell me a bit uh, what you wanted to do with the cinematography in the film, the visual aspect in general? Yeah, with the cinematography, because um, I wanted it, um, I wanted it to be something that was not as stiff, because my character was already very stiff. Like my my character Alice is very rigid. Like the way she sits she's like she's like this you know mm. and i wanted the camera to be because there's so much tension going inside her even when she's like just sitting down i don't want the camera to be like frozen so static so it was the whole film was handheld mm-hmm. um i wanted it to feel immersive in a sense that okay you know that there's someone behind the camera you know that it's it's like you <laughs> you know um and i felt like um me making it handheld and i used 
one lens for the film. Um, and for my cinematographer, I, he kind of, he also has a background in documentary and I have a background in documentary as well. So um, that was the treatment, like getting the pulse of each scene. That was how it was because I was so scared that it's going to look like, I didn't want it to look like a TV drama. Because mm-hmm. the material has a tendency to be melodramatic. And I was so scared of that. I needed it to be less of that and <laughs> just really very nuanced in in terms of movement and framing and you know. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. that's why a lot of the times I, I, I prefer shots where 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 my actors are completely in the in the dark or like shots where their their backs are turned because um when you're filming something very intimate, you know, it I I I did that because when things are intimate the tendency is for like as a person I turn myself away. Mm-hmm. Turn yourself away. And that was always my instruction to my my actors. Never look at each other when you're talking to each other. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, okay. all right. And and what about those scenes where she's talking with the advisor about her abortion? It, it, for me, it looked like an interrogation of sorts. The way it's set up, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, I did. I did want to because, um, because every time when we go to stuff like that, it always feels like. An interrogation. You feel very vulnerable at a time where you don't want to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I wanted it. I really wanted it to feel like an interrogation because most of the time, when you're in front of a therapist or a counselor, that's all. You feel like, even though the counselor would always try to sound very um nice very non-judgmental you always feel like you are being judged by everything you say now, that's why i made max like in there were some qu- questions where she wouldn't answer or she would like fake confidence because you know that's how it is in, in real life mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay okay and um what is your opinion of the filipino movie industry at the moment. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's struggling. Mm-hmm. Especially with the pandemic. Mm. I mean, like for this film, I only had eight days to shoot. And that was like brutal. That was brutal. Like I told myself, I'll never make a film again where I, I only have eight days to shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, a lot of because because of the pandemic as well, you know, a lot of cinemas have lost their audiences, despite the fact that we opened the cinemas already. Um, people just stopped going to the cinemas because everything is online now. Um, it's been two years. People have forgotten how it feels to be inside a cinema. So it's really struggling. And um, producers are less likely to to, fund, to, to support a film. Um, what they would support is something where, you know, um, they can profit, of course, where there's a sure um, return of investment. And, you know, during the pandemic, it was really the entertainment industry really suffered a lot um so a lot of people lost their jobs so right now it's still we're still struggling and there are some studios that are trying to like making films for as content you know because mm-hmm. of the streaming and yeah i mean i mean i don't think that cinema it's content content is different from cinema and i think I think cinema is struggling really, really bad. Mm-hmm. And I mean, from from our from from cinema 
Sin Himalaya alone, they, there were supposed to be 20 finalists. There were supposed to be 20 films. Mm-hmm. Because it was supposed to be for Cinemalaya 2020 and Cinemalaya 2021. Mm-hmm. So there are 10 finalists for each year. But because of the pandemic, it was postponed. So the two batches screened for 2022. But out of the 20 finalists, only 11 were produced. Because a lot of the producers backed out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. So any future projects you are working on? What does the future hold? Um, right now we're still concentrating on like getting distribution for 12 weeks, um, um, like premiering in other in, in the international test circuits, and then um, I'm still doing documentary work. That's my day job. Um. And of course, there's an idea for another film, but like I'm, I'm too scared to talk about that. Okay, okay, don't yeah. jinx it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, and the last question: uh, What was the, how was the reception of the audience in Cinemalaya of the film? Actually, it was really great. That's what I love about Cinemalaya because after when you go to CCP, you know, people can just like talk to you, approach you out of nowhere. Um, and the thing is, uh, a lot of women really like approached me, like when I'm backstage, they would approach me when I'm in the lobby, they would approach me and they would like telling me that for the first time they feel seen, um, they've never seen a film where their lives are depicted accurately on screen. And that was really my goal is to connect with a lot of Filipino women. Um, and yeah, that was the most fulfilling moment for me because before, before I screened my film, I was so scared. Like I was so scared because I felt like, what if people don't understand? It's too female. It's too female angst. People Mm. might not understand, but then I'm getting a lot of good feedback, people approaching me from outside. And I also really got, um, great feedback even from the local film critics so yeah i feel i kind of feel like okay then it's fine to tell stories like this then okay okay that's great well i guess that's it thank you very much anna isabel for being here thank you panos is that how you pronounce your name panos Panos is fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, no one can pronounce my surname, so Panos is fine. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay. This was Alzheimer's Movie Pulse interviews, and have a nice evening. Bye.